Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, why do I believe we are on the cusp of the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ and the commencement of Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period? Because I'm looking at God's prophetic timepiece, which is the nation of Israel. If you want to know what time it is on God's prophetic timeline, you watch his timepiece, which is again the nation of Israel. Israel is the hour hand, Jerusalem is the minute hand, and the Temple Mount as a second hand. And when you look right now at what's happening with Israel, what's happening with Jerusalem, what's happening with the Temple Mount, uh, you will see we are on the verge of a dispensational change. Again, right now, we're in the dispensation of grace, the church age, but God is about to put his full attention back to the nation of Israel for the time of Jacob's trouble. Again, Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation period. But I want you to listen to this very carefully, folks. Both Israeli and United States officials in recent days have hinted that they have intelligence that Iran, through the proxies of Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, will attack Israel on Quds Day. Now, what's Quds Day, spelled Q-U-D-S? Well, it's an annual pro-Palestinian event held on the last Friday of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan to express support for Palestinians and oppose Israel. This year, when is Quds Day or K-U-D-S Day? It falls on Friday, April 21st, so coming up here in a few days. Given this information, Benjamin Netanyahu is proposing a debilitating preemptive attack on Gaza, similar to the Six-Day War in 1967, which they attacked and eliminated the Air Force in Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. Netanyahu is planning a major military operation in Gaza, with Hamas being the most direct Iran threat due to proximity. I mean, folks, the signs are all there. The military across the country, Israel, are under, un, under unprecedented high alert right now. Vacations have been canceled amongst all the military. The largest buildup of troops along the Gaza border, um, the, sorry, the large buildup of troops along the Gaza border, adding more daily. I'll just get right to some of the recent posts. This is recently in from the Jerusalem Post. Netanyahu, the current prime minister of Israel, Israel is in a challenging security situation on all fronts, referring to threats from Israel's surrounding enemies on all sides. Then this just recently and from the Jerusalem Post, Hezbollah and Hamas heads meet, promise further resistance against Israel. So we saw the current rockets being fired from Lebanon, Syria, and from the Gaza Strip, and Hamas claimed responsibility. I know at first uh, they were thinking Hezbollah was involved because the rockets came from Lebanon, but Hamas took the credit uh, for those rockets. However, we've been seeing a growing coordination between Hezbollah and Hamas. Again, they just met. And there's others that are holding secret meetings, the other surrounding enemies of Israel joining together. There's like a confederacy forming. And now we're seeing the reports coming out that there may be a plot from Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis in Yemen, and possibly others uh, to attack Israel during Quds Day, coming up here on Friday, April 21st. So will this Quds Day coming up here on Friday, April 21st, be the spark to the battle for Jerusalem? Now, what am I talking about? Well, when you go to the book of Psalms, chapter 83, the prophet Asaph, we're going to read some of the verses here. We're going to talk about this. In Psalms chapter 83, verses 1 to 5, the prophet Asaph records the following. Keep not those silent, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. 
They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So we see very clearly, Asaph records it right here in Psalms chapter 83, the first few verses. Right? There is coming a time where there is going to be a confederacy of a group of people that are going to join together with one consent. Their whole mission is to wipe Israel off the map so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And when you go to Psalms chapter 83, verses 6 to 8, it actually tells you the Confederate nations that are going to come together to try to wipe Israel off the map. On the left there, you can see the uh, ancient names, and on the right, you can see the, the current equivalent here. So you have the tents of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, Hagarines, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Tyre, and Assyria. And on the right side, you see the names of, of what they're known as today, the Palestinians, the Southern Jordanians, the Saudis, uh, the Egyptians, Hezbollah in the northern Lebanese, the Arabs of the Sinai area, Hamas of the Gaza Strip. So Psalms chapter 83, Asaph talks about this group of, this group of nations that's going to join together, this confederacy. They're going to consult. They're going to meet. They're going to join together with one consent. Again, that is to attack Israel as a confederacy with the same goal, again, to wipe Israel off the map. But when you read the entire chapter, and I encourage you to do so, of Psalms chapter 83, you will see that God is, God's going to kick some butt. God is going to destroy these enemies that attempt to come against Israel with that one consent. God is going to get the victory. He's going to defend Israel and wipe, or he's going to defeat all these enemies that, conf uh, that come together with this confederacy to attack Israel. But what's amazing is this war, Psalms 83, once it occurs, this is actually a perfect scenario for once this war occurs, God gets the victory, Israel's enemies are defeated, right? What a perfect time for the Antichrist to come forth to make order out of chaos. And then Daniel 9, 27, for the Antichrist, when he rises out of the ashes after the rapture of the church, he makes order out of chaos. And from this war that comes against Israel, he can come forth and save the day. Israel's going to look to this man, this false Messiah. They're going to think he's the Messiah. He's got all the answers. Then Israel's going to make a covenant with death, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. The Antichrist will confirm the covenant with many, Israel and its surrounding enemies, for a seven-year time period. That is what's known as, that's once the Antichrist confirms this covenant with Israel and the surrounding enemies, the many, for one week, seven years, that will start the seven-year tribulation period. And I believe, again, part of the Daniel 9, 27 covenant will be allowing them to rebuild the third temple. But just to recap, will Kutz Day, coming up on Friday, April 21st, 2023, be the spark for the Battle of Jerusalem? Again, both Israel and United States officials in recent days have hinted that they have intelligence that Iran, through the proxies of Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, will attack Israel on Kutz Day. Um, which falls on Friday, April 21st. Given this information, again, Netanyahu is proposing a debilitating a preemptive strike attack on Gaza, similar to the Six-Day War in 1967, which they attacked and eliminated the Air Force in Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. Netanyahu is planning a major military operation in Gaza, with Hamas being the most direct Iran threat due to the proximity. And how do we know this is coming? Again, the military across the country, Israel, are under unprecedented high alert. The vacations have been canceled amongst all military, and there's a massive large buildup of troops along the Gaza border, and they're adding more daily. Folks, when you look at the nations listed in Psalms 83, the confederacy that's going to come together to attempt to wipe Israel off the map, and you look at what's happening right now, how there's meetings taking place between Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, and the others are holding secret meetings. They're confederating. They're consulting one another. They have one consent. They want to wipe Israel off the map. And now there's a, the intelligence coming out of them coordinating together 
possibly on Coots Day, Friday, April 21st, to join together for a massive attack. So what could we see in the coming days and weeks? Is this more of a buildup? More, more of this Confederacy joining together? Is there going to be more test runs, kind of like we saw recently, leading up to the eventual Psalms 83 war? Or is Coots Day going to be the spark that lights the fuse for the Battle of Jerusalem? We're watching. That's what we do. But when you look at what's happening with Israel, with Jerusalem, and with the Temple Mount right now, folks, you better be looking up because we are on the verge of a dispensational change. All I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on a lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood, on the cross, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God, and our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us, and he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. But the bottom line is this, heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment, it's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you, I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith in in your trust, in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming. And he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.